apologies once again. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, wherever you are. Uh, thank you for your time. My name is Daquan Lawrence, and I am from Howard University. Um, as mentioned, the title of my paper is Africanity, Humanity, and the Global Political Economy. Uh, Will Africans contribute to the Fourth Industrial Revolution? Um, and broadly, uh, this paper is pretty much about human rights uh, from a pan-African or pro-African and pan-African uh, perspective. Um, yeah, so without further ado, um, for those of us who know or are familiar, um, Africanity can be considered the attributes that are affiliated with Africans, otherwise known as black people. And in my opinion, um, when it comes to human rights, there's a double standard for black people or Africans in terms of human rights. Uh, I had the privilege of studying international law, um, economics, and international relations at Johns Hopkins Sykes in Washington, D.C., and uh, I learned a lot of different things. But for the sake of time, I'm not gonna say all of them here. But as again, define um, individuals such as uh, Steve Biko, Francis, Francis Fanon, um, and a slew of other individuals have identified that blackness is a negative, is one, it's a social construction, and two, it's again, um, a negative, it has a negative connotation in a sense that it, it, it deems people who identify as black or who are identified as black as inferior, whereas people who are non-black are superior. So there would seem to be a spectrum gradient or social hierarchy uh, where again, black means the bottom. Um, with that being said, I'm going to begin reading um, excerpts, one from a uh, human rights speech and poem, and then, then I will segue into my paper and then I'll be done. Um, and hopefully, um, nobody has questions. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, the title of this is uh, African equalism, or black equalism. Um, I'm far from perfect, but I see the world of opportunity. A neurotic introvert, I often isolate myself but preach unity. I decided to right my wrongs by writing human rights essays and speeches arranged like songs. I'll get there, but I'm not talking about myself. Just African equalism, Afro rights, adjusting capitalism, and redistributing global wealth. It's been said before Marx, but they were black or African people so they act like they said it for their health. It's funny and racist that we only think that white or Asian people are smart enough to help. I'm a Pan-African egalitarian, so let's talk about the economy and inequality, or the World Bank, International Monetary Fund, World Trade Organization, and let's mandate an equal trade policy. Corporations have more rights than people, but people are still greater than property. You have angels watching over you, and I have angels watching over me. The current system, values profit over human development. Therefore, I'm trying to teach youth about public policy, urban, and international development because they lie and create poverty but say that it's only changed by voting for the government. African equalism is a code, standard, and agreement, or policy to view and treat all considered black or African or brown with dignity and humanity despite social, economic, or political disparity. Black is the presence of all colors. We trust racialism and act like we don't care about each other. I have to say equal because some people don't want to work together. Different generations, but we're stuck with the same precipitation. When it rains, it pours. Darkie's future is always cloudy. Guilty with no deliberation. But white people get a free pass, like a no call. The government supplies us with drugs to distribute, but you don't see the snowfall. I thought we all knew, y'all that manufactured democracy is void of inequality and equity. Global superpowers, but they never save the world for racial and economic minorities. They keep saying Obama won, your plight is done. Slavery is in the past, but some of us are gifted like the present and we see international apartheid and we know that it's based on caste. They don't want us to be great or to agree as politics are based on dissensus. That's why society is organized and prioritized based on special, they mean economic interests. Google DM Lawrence, I broke it down on the American caste story. Those who say systemic change for blacks can only happen with, with money, don't have anything for me. My mind is way too fast. I lap, I, I lap those outdated ideas to make new ones every time. Notions that view differences as signs of superiority and inferiority are antiquated paradigms. I'm almost done. I still need my loot by rent day, 
but that doesn't stop me from having a heart like Kunta Kinte. It's my turn to try to give us, us free, like Senke. When we come together, there's no limit to what we can do. Everybody can eat, or we could shine like playing AAU. That's basketball, for in American context. Uh, or we can build schools for our kids like HBCUs. Or we can organize like HBCUs and create the MIAC and SWAC. If the lone wolf dies and the strength of the wolf is in a pack, how long are we gonna keep up this act? Racism is not done and that's a fact. But when I look around, I see more indifference to struggle among blacks by blacks. I'm not talking black on black crime. I meant dividing us based on false ideology and controlling our minds. Sorry, lastly. Coffee blacks say black is beautiful. Shea butter blacks say they created colorism to separate black people. High yellow blacks say black people don't like them because their skin is light. Articulate blacks say black people don't like them because they talk white. The very conservative blacks say we need more economic success and partitions in communities. The liberal blacks say we need more leaders, education, training, and employment opportunities. The educated African says, let's go to America. They have all the answers. The unindoctrinated African says America is like a cancer. The francophone black says, run choice, choice trois, Frenchmen. The Afro-Latina says the Latinx African, the Latinx diaspora is African. The black Christian says, praying to Jesus is how black people get through this. The black Muslim says Jesus was Jewish. The black Hindu says that's not practical. Hebrew Israelites say all black people are Jews. The poor blacks say black people will be all right if we just unite. The rich blacks say they'd rather do donate money to the all right. Southern blacks say that the South is different, but somehow it will overcome some way. The Caribbean blacks say Babylon will burn soon someday. The biracial blacks say that we're all biracial. The young blacks say how long are they gonna hold black people back? The elders say black don't crack. The government said they made crack for black. The teacher said that black people came from slaves. The preacher says that black people need church to learn how to behave. And in a world that, pers in a world that personifies objects and objectifies people, I'm just trying to say no matter what kind of black or African, we're all equal. I can see us working together like the electric slide or the Cupid shuffle if we just commit. But if you can't see it, you can't be it. And if you can't be it, it won't happen. It won't happen if you don't have patience. Thoughts become things, things take time. That's the law of gestation. We can all stand together like a demonstration or we can move the whole hood or townships out like gentrification. Little Wayne told me to rep them where I can't take them. Decolonization, decolonization was my last statement. Either that or assalamu alaikum. We're all equal like paying tithes or paying taxes. They tell us that blacks are no good without money but the fact is, every person has a soul and every soul has a purpose. It's yours, do you know how big the earth is? They have us focused on being what you see and you haven't realized that you already are perfect. I say that again to make us realize that we are here for a reason on a particular path and we still don't need a curriculum to know that we're a part of the math. I'm really just trying to give us new African pride because as mentioned, we all have angels watching us from the other side. So with that being said, the next thing I'm gonna do before I sit down and get out of your way is to read a little bit about human rights. Uh, the field of international law is historically known as, to scholars as a field that concerns legal relationships between sovereign states. While modern definitions of international law define the subject matter as the legal relationships that exist not only between states, but between and among international organizations, individuals, groups, and multinational corporations, and other entities that are considered capable of possessing the characteristics of legal personality. Traditionally, the way states treat their citizens has been considered a subject of states' domestic law alone. However, within contemporary international law, writers and practitioners remain maintain that every state is subject to a body of law broadly identified as human rights. The domain of human rights is exonerably and inexplicably linked to the rights that may be deemed cultural, political, economic, and social. As a result, human rights issues are, are often vast in their scope and consist of many gray areas regarding public policy, allowing for insidious violations, insid yeah, insidious violations uh, that occur to the implications, due to the implications and applications of international law. As the field of international law continues to develop and become more comprehensive, the definition of the subject has grown to include the relationship between states and their citizens. Individuals have also gained some level of legal personality within international law, and human rights is known as the calling card that governs the responsibilities and obligations of individuals on an international stage. 
Though there is much disagreement about the boundaries of human rights, the subject is widely considered as the rights that, atta that are attached to any individuals by virtue of their personhood and membership in a group. The modern human rights movement traces its roots to the revolutionary ideas in the 18th century, such as the French Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen, the American Declaration of Independence, and the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights. The affirmation documents, the affirmation documents speak to up un, in, in, inalienable rights that dec and declare that their respective governments instituted things such as liberty, property, security, and resistance to oppression, and even life. Despite that these documents excluded large parts of humanity and the existing population, those documents act as a conception um, and origin of sources that, that make up the, the modern day human rights movement. With the advent of the League of Nations in 1945, human rights began to take an entirely new form. And since then, we have again subscribed to human rights laws that again govern international society. Um, with that being said, I'm going to segue into, before I wrap up, um, my treatment about the global political economy and the fourth industrial revolution. For those of us who know, uh, throughout history, we've had several industrial revolutions. We're now encountering another one where we are now participating in a virtual conference that is hybrid, that allows people to participate from all over the world and time and space is being transcended. However, there are still many individuals, some of them here in Cape Town, some of them all across Africa, some of them in North America, some of them in Europe, that do not have access to technology, do not have access to the, the rights that are supposedly guaranteed by rights that are afforded to other individuals. And to me, again, that's a, a very obvious, blatant, and egregious double standard. If, for those that missed it, in the beginning, I identified Africanity as blackness. It seems to be that those who are considered black or who are African do not have human rights because when there's a human rights violation, we're very selective in terms of how we're going to remedy the situation. We can cite state citizen violence and conflict. We can cite international intra and uh, interstate wars. We can cite um, the oppression that particularly African women face. We can also cite the oppression that members of the LGBTQIA uh, community also face. And if we conflate all of these instances together, the picture becomes very, very murky for those who are considered black or African. In my opinion, as I read, black or African equalism is a mandate code and policy that allows that spectrum and social hierarchy to be removed so people can work together. I think there is that's my opinion, and I believe that there are 7.5 or 4 billion people that exist in the world today. With that being said, if one individual could come up with one idea for all people to work together, that's more or less an egalitarian treatment of the economy, I think that we all could. And with that being said, that's the conclusion of my remarks. Uh, thank you for your time. Just to say, we'll listen to the presentations and take questions at the 